What is China really like in 2023? In today's video, I'm taking you on a walk through downtown Shanghai. We'll explore local wet markets, speak to China's youth about the country's growing unemployment. I'll show you what this young Xinjiang boy is doing on the streets of Shanghai, and also share the fascinating story of how one American brand has become a staple of modern life in China. If you want to see what China is really like in 2023, this is the video for you. Good morning, everybody, from one of the most incredible cities in the entire world. We are coming live from you from downtown Shanghai. A little bit of an overcast day, but it is the absolute perfect day to go for a walk and talk, explore some of these local neighborhoods in Shanghai, and really get a good feel of what the local vibe is here in Shanghai. You know, it's been over almost four years since my last visit to China. And there's just something so exciting about being on the ground. Nanjing Donglu is one of the most famous walking streets in all of China. And this is really, you know, back in the day before everything went online. This is where everybody, I remember first being an expat here in 2007. I would come down here all the time and you would be walking here with tens of thousands of people. This would really be where all the big department stores would be. And not as busy as before. I mean, again, it's early in the morning. Let's give you guys a look from the other side. This is Shanghai right here. I mean, we've got an iconic American brand here. Arguably the most famous sportsman of all time, Michael Jordan. What great branding this is. I mean, you got the Jumpman logo. Oh, I love these guys. Look at these delivery guys. The hustle and bustle this morning here in Shanghai. And this is one of the large shopping malls that I was talking about. Nice little photo shoot. These ladies are this morning getting some classic photos done. And this is what I love about Shanghai. I mean, look at the architecture here. This is just incredible, this brick building. Look at how small these bricks are. The classic architecture. All right, here they're recording a new, um, some content for a new soccer brand. This is fantastic. All right, so just outside this model shoot here, we're at the Beijing East Road. Beautiful architecture here. Look at these classic buildings here in Shanghai. I mean, when you think of China, you're not thinking of these historic buildings like this. Wow, how beautiful. And here's where this old building has been converted into one of the famous Starbucks here. Got some ladies here doing some photo shoots. Let's check out this Starbucks. How China is converting the old into the new. I think this is what really would surprise a lot of Westerners just to see how modern and advanced China is. And this is what I want people to really understand a little bit more about why it's so important though the United States and China relationship. Now I've been a Starbucks shareholder since 2005. Actually, Starbucks was the very first stock that I ever invested in. I was in college. I was so inspired by the story of Starbucks and really their vision for expansion around the world. And there has never, there is not a more important market in the world for Starbucks than China. At one point in time, Starbucks was opening a new store in China every 17 hours. That is incredible. Just think about the logistics of scouting a location, going through the architecture, getting the licensing, the permitting, building this out, and opening a new store in China every 17 hours. Starbucks has just opened thousands of coffee shops across this country, and it's become such a popular spot because Many Chinese, they love this. It's almost like a status symbol, right? You're, you're drinking this famous American brand. And the thing that's been so successful about Starbucks is that they have created what they call the third place. The third place is you have your home, you have your work, and what they want Starbucks to do, they wanna have an environment where people can come, relax with friends, have a good conversation. And one of the things that's just so incredible is the artwork and the decor. Look at this, how they've highlighted the building that we're in right now, okay? The background here is some beautiful teas, and then they've gone, this is the actual building where the Starbucks is located. Every Starbucks is different decor, different feel. No Starbucks is the same. Beautiful morning here in Shanghai. Wow, this is just absolutely incredible. All right, our street tour of downtown Shanghai continues. I wanna give everybody a little bit of local insight to just how life is just normal here. There's a popular type of breakfast stand here. This is a uh, kind of a tofu milk that people are drinking here. And this is really a great insight here. This is how most Chinese are buying their, their fruits and vegetables here. A little fruit stand. Popular in Asia, this is the durian. Probably a fruit you don't see quite often in North America. 
very popular here. And this is part of the fun thing about China. When you're walking down the streets, all sorts of different shops here, right? Restaurants, little stops selling everything you need here, right? Here, brooms, umbrellas, hats. Of course, the famous stores here. These are all of the daily necessities. No better way to start the day with a little walk amongst the community here. Love it. Local bakery here. The man, Chairman Mao. Morning time in Shanghai. And look what we found here. This is a seafood market. This is Xiao Rong Xiao, right? Mm. This is from Jiangsu. Jiangsu. Wow, that's good. That's the... I'm not sure how to cook it. Wow, this is fascinating. This guy's preparing the fish here. His grandma getting ready to make some seafood tonight. Got some fresh shrimp right in here. Amazing. And one of my favorite things to do in Shanghai is get off the beaten track and explore some of these back alleyways. We're here in a local Shanghai neighborhood. Look behind me. Look how the people still are drying their clothes. Most, most people, most Chinese people do not in fact have dryers. Yeah, Zhao Shanghao. <laughs> oh man, everybody, everybody in China, they, they just love it. Whenever they see the Lao Wai, you know, big tall white guy out here with the camera recording, they just absolutely love it. Look at this guy. Gummer, you are now watching what? Found you. Oh yeah. Found, <laughs> Found one of my fans here. Can you see? There's me. Look at that. <laughs> oh, thank you, Gummer. Thank you for your support. Because I was on the yoga mat. I saw your talk. I think your speech is very good. Oh, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your support. Yes, I haven't been here for a long time. I've been here for a long time. I've been here for four years. 所以你看，那个一进来的时候，我们我们外国人没办法回来，对吧？但是今年的三月十五号，中国就开了那个那个签证，对，然后我就可以回来了。所以，我差大概有四年多我都没有过来了。所以现在，呃，不容易的，不容易。我真的很想中国的，想了很太多了。所以我这次要回来，要看看现在中国怎么样的。啊，你你觉得你觉得现在怎么样？中国？嗯，我觉得现在还不错吧。但是我觉得因为。之前的一系列封锁政策嘛，导致我觉得还是中国现在的，包括经济以及这个，呃，这个这个这个社会的整个人心还是有一些动荡，有一些起伏的。我觉得这个是需要一段时间去慢慢的恢复正轨。对对对没没错没错。这个影响后续的影响还是在持续的，包括失业率什么的。我想问一下，你现在你现在多大了？我二十八。二十八岁。对。因为我们听说过了，现在呃。中国的经济对这些年轻人来说，比如说你是从十六岁到二十八岁左右，这这些人他们很难找到工作的。你现在有影响吗？你你感觉了吗？对对对，这个体感是蛮强烈的。这个就是，确实是现在就失业率是比较高。对。然后呢，呃，因为确实就中国的这个本科毕业生特别多嘛，就大家都觉得自己是大学生，然后有很多工作觉得放不下身段，明白？去做，对对对。所以说，对对，就是国家也在号召嘛，说大家要这个脱下什么长衫啊，脱下这个红衣级的长衫嘛，要去做一些更更这种更切实际的一些工作，因为不可能人人都在这个。大楼里边当白领或者什么,什么对，没错，没错，没错。那你觉得现在你生活的质量在中国，你觉得比以前好一点吗？现在你觉得每年都会有进步吗？这个对对，你你怎么看？我体感不是很强烈，这个你可能要去问一些年纪稍微大一点的。OK， 好的，他们可能会有更更深刻的答案。是是是，因为我们年轻人确实确实不像老一辈嘛，他会觉得说。自己需要很多的储蓄或者怎么样，年轻人可能观念会更开放一点，觉得自己，我可能不会想特别特别多很往后的事情嘛。没错，没错，对。老一辈的人，他们可能会体感会更强烈，因为他们年轻时候可能会过得更艰难一点。没错的，没错的，他们年轻的时候要吃苦的，对吧？对的。对的但是现在你你们年轻人，你你们出来的时候就一直看一个很。很服的中国，对吧？对的，对对对对对，明白明白。我真的真的是很高兴认识你了，呃，感谢感谢你的你的你的支持，呃，我我的我的粉丝在在上海，太太好了，太好，很高兴很高兴认识你了。好的 and, ，and this is really what's just so important, guys, is getting on the streets here, talking to local people.、Uh, incredible. I mean, I'm walking down the streets, and you know, as soon as I get the camera out, someone's just like, 好像我就在 YouTube 就看到你了，呃，因为我就认识你了。And I mean, it's it's so.、Um, It's so inspiring to be here back in China and just doing this. I mean, here we are on the side of the street 
And, and this is what I want everybody back home to see is just how incredibly you know, normal life is here and that there's so many Chinese people just doing normal things. I mean, here we are on the side of the street in Shanghai, we've got you know, an older group of ladies that are shooting you know, photographs together. We've got a young boy from Xinjiang. I mean, how handsome is that little guy? And I mean, it's, you know what's amazing is as soon as I saw him, it really reminded me of, I have two twin boys at home. And you know, the interesting thing about uh, people from Xinjiang is that they look very, they look like foreigners. And so what I asked him, I said, are you a Hunshuar? Which means, are you mixed blood? Meaning, are you, are you mixed? Are you mixed race? And you know, he said, no, I'm from Xinjiang. And, but he looks exactly like my boys. My boys are mixed race, half Chinese, half Caucasian. And they look very identical, they look very similar. It's incredible. It was a handsome little guy, you know, doing a uh, photo shoot this morning here in Shanghai. I mean, this is what I want to show you guys. This is what I want to show you. This is the incredible things in China where you never know what's going to happen. And you never know what you're going to see. That's why it's just so incredible to, to come out here and just make some videos and showcase what's really going on in uh, Shanghai. Just a walk and talk in the beautiful neighborhood here. This is incredible. Everyone, if you want the full insight into China's economy and learn both the good and bad about China's future, I invite you to watch my full interview with Sean Ryan, an American expat who has lived in Shanghai for over 25 years and shares the insights traditional media is scared to tell you about China. Click here to watch this video.